Welcome, everybody. I'm really glad you're here. I'm happy that we're getting to have this um, salon talk about uh, WC All, which is something that I love. Um, and I think uh, I'd like to just start with a, a little bit of a, um, a river arts kind of update or um, some information and, and then I will turn it over to our distinguished guests when, um, when I'm done and, and then I hope that, um, that, that this can be a great conversation with, um, you know, I think, I think there's one of the things that I love about WCL is that there are so many people with so much wisdom and knowledge and experience in the room that everybody usually has something to offer. So I hope that we can have that experience tonight. Um, so, but before I dive into that, I just wanted to kind of let you know about a couple of the other things that are happening at River Arts because we are doing so much that it's hard to fit it all into, you know, our daily dose email or our social media feed. And I just am trying to get the word out as much as I can. Um, one thing that I'm really excited about is that we've just announced our new online flash exhibit, which is gonna open next Friday on our website with the theme of imperfection. And uh, so we're accepting submissions of work right now. And I invite everyone to participate and to spread the word. Um, and the, the idea is that in this kind of period where still things are so unpredictable and changing very rapidly, um, this idea of a flash exhibit is immediate and it's kind of of the moment and it's, it's able to respond to where we all are right now instead of, you know, in a more traditional um, exhibit situation, we would be putting out a call for an exhibit that would be happening in eight weeks or 10 weeks. And I don't know about you guys, but I cannot even picture two weeks from now right now, <laughs> much less two months or more. So, um, and, and, and it's a way that I think uh, everyone is feeling that sense of uncertainty about the future and that sort of need for immediate connection. So um, we're offering this as a way to connect audiences and artists and, um, and also all of us with the art making process um, because it is such an immediate uh, an, an immediate kind of a, a, an exhibit. We are not only inviting but welcoming and encouraging works in progress and unfinished works and maybe even work that didn't work out for some reason. You know, some you, you had an idea and it didn't turn out the way you wanted it to but uh, you can still share something about how you got to where you got. And excuse me while I I'll give my friend another place to be for a moment. Um, and one of the inspirations for this was, I don't know if you remember at the runway um, event a couple of years ago, the crowd favorite was Ann Singer's dress. It was called a party dress. And she made it out of all her sketches and, and sort of attempted paintings that she didn't like for some reason. Um, and it turned into this beautiful dress and it was in the window of Arts Alive for a few, several months after that. And um, I was working in Arts Alive during that time. And I can tell you that so many people saw that dress in the window and came in and they wanted to buy it. They wanted to know what it was, who made it. It was absolutely the crowd favorite and it was beautiful. So um, to me, that was a really excellent illustration of how um, things that we feel are not successful might actually be successful. <laughs> so uh, that's, that's our um, exhibit coming up. And then uh, I also want to tell you about our salons. In March, we are having a literary theme. Um, and it's going to be started off with uh, two librarians from the Kent County Public Library. Um, Natalie and Annie will be joining us. And they're going to talk about a look back. And it's also kind of a kickoff to um, 
an initiative that they're starting. Uh, we'll also have an author, Yolanda Akri, who founded Black Minimalists and taught one of our most successful uh, classes in the last year on Zoom. Uh, and then we're gonna have Robert Earl Price and James Hall from the Literary House and uh, a writer and performing artist named Tracy Williams. So I'm excited about every single one of those. We also have classes. We have clay studio rental by the day in a very COVID safe way for individual potters to come in and work. We have the photography club every single week and a lot of other things, including um, our new monthly artist roundtable conversations that are hosted by Sue Wilson. And this is um, kind of a, a time for artists to come and talk with each <laughs> other, kind of a peer-to-peer -peer mentoring thing and, and uh, advice and suggestions and just sort of, um, sort of how everybody's in the same boat together in being a working artist in this new normal that we're in and whatever the new normal is that we're heading for. Um, and that's on the last or the fourth Wednesday of each month, which is tomorrow. So um, please feel free to, to join that conversation and you can see more information and find out details about all of these things on our website. And then um, the last thing that I wanna say is that as you know, um, it's financial contributions from people who support our mission and our programs and our activities that make us able to be here and doing all these things. So if you can, and if you feel moved to, I encourage you to make a donation to River Arts so that we can keep doing what we're doing. Um, and so with all that business out of the way, I want to just uh, say that as somebody who has taught for WC All, and as somebody who um, returned to school not very long ago, really, as a non-traditional age student, I am an enormous enthusiast of lifelong learning, and I really believe that it is um, one of the best ways to not only uh, keep your mind going and, and continue to grow and evolve as a person, but I also think it's one of the best ways to interact with the world and for the world to um, kind of evolve in a direction instead of uh, uh, being stagnant. Because when you get out of school and you're 22 or 26 or whatever, if you get locked in, you got a long life ahead of you and uh, <laughs> you could just be stuck for a long time. So, um, I am really happy to live in a place where WCL exists and to have been able to participate in it. And so I would like to turn it over now to the current head honcho of WCL, Ms. Jan Elvin. Well, thank you, Mariah. Um, you amaze me. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> River Arts is just in, in, doing such amazing stuff. It's wonderful. Um, I have a teeny tiny little correction about the email that you sent that talked about Lucy McFadden speaking on February 11th. Okay. Actually, that already happened. And oh. um, <laughs> after of you just gave did. that that whole account of what you've been up to, I, I, I can understand why a little, anyway. Um, Mine means nothing anymore. February no. 11th is tomorrow and yesterday. <laughs> and It'll happen again. <laughs> It'll come again next year. I apologize um, for that. <laughs> no, so it's gonna be Astrid Caldas, who is a climate scientist with the Union of Concerned Scientists. And she's gonna be our learn at lunch person on March 18th. So anyway, um, and Mariah, WCL loves you too, okay? Uh, <laughs> so Thank you. keep that in mind. I'm just gonna talk a little bit about the structure of WCL and the governance, although looking at these faces, I'm probably preaching to the choir, but um, if, if it goes out to other people, then maybe it'll be useful. And, and if you have questions about the way it works, not, not everybody really knows exactly how it works. Um, and then David's gonna, <laughs> do the fun part and talk about the classes and the instructors and stuff. That is the heart of, of course, of what we do. Um, so thank you for 
for having us. Um, so WCL was founded about 27 years ago by um, some Chestertown folks who were interested in learning as a something that never should never end. And it's a volunteer nonprofit organization, membership organization for uh, folks who are interested in engaging their minds in lifelong learning through classes and events and lectures, trips. Anyone can join, everybody is welcome to join. And members are, make a little pitch here during my talk, are, invited and encouraged and we're eager to have people participate in committees. You don't have to be a member of the council. You don't have to be on the council to participate in one of the committees. I'll talk about those in a minute. And also um, every uh, year, usually a couple of council members cycle off and that's happening this year. And so we are uh, delighted to be accepting any um, applications for, for council members. And if you can, you can get in touch with me or get in touch with Sue Calloway at, uh, at the office. Uh, we have two vacancies. It's a three-year term and we meet every once a month. And uh, it's, as, as Ronnie has told me many times, it's, um, it's a lot of fun. And um, <laughs> <laughs> that's just, I'm, that's another thing. Um, so is there 13 people on the council and the only requirement to be on the council is to be a member of uh, WCL. Uh, so the three committees, we have the chair of one of them here. Um, Sue Kenyon is the chair of the publicity committee, which um, spreads the news, all the good news about all the events and classes and trips and provides information to the larger community about what we're up to. And we are always looking for anybody with writing skills or interest in communication and particularly in uh, with social media, if anybody has any particular um, interest in that or um, expertise there. Um, Another committee, well, is um, the Special Events Committee, and they propose and plan and coordinate all the events that you've heard about, trips, uh, day trips to interesting places and special gatherings like the annual meeting that we have in May. Um, they sponsor some overnight trips and they've sponsored some international trips. A couple of years ago, they went to Cuba. Um, some of you may have gone on that trip. And it's a good, it's a fun committee to be on because you, it's a give, gives you an excuse to go scout around an art gallery or something in Baltimore or somewhere that you might be interested in. And you can bring all that information back to the, back to the committee. The last one is the curriculum committee, which identifies and evaluates uh, course proposals for each, each uh, semester. David will maybe talk more about how the curriculum committee looks for and finds instructors. And if anybody has any ideas about that in this, this crowd, that would be very welcome. They also put on our showcase, which um, happens each spring and fall to um, where we gather to meet the instructors and hear what, they, what, what their classes are gonna be like and then register for the classes. And also we have a treasurer and we are, uh, currently in need of an assistant treasurer, somebody to uh, take over the treasurer job next year. So that person would be shadow, shadowing the current treasurer. So if you have any real hankering for dealing with some numbers, um, we've, we've got the job for you. Uh, so I just wanna encourage anybody about that. And the other thing that I just wanted to talk about was how we fit into the college, because sometimes people are curious about that. We're analogous to a department of the college. We get lots of help and lots of support from the college. Of course, we have in, in the before times and in the after times, we will again have classes at the college. We have our office again, well, kind of at the college, <laughs> we will again. <clears throat> and um, we're just extremely grateful for, for all they do for us, but we are, entirely self-supporting financially through membership and um, 
membership dues and, and donations. And each year we, we are very pleased and proud to give a donation to a scholarship fund at the college uh, to support the college, the goals of the educational goals of the college and to help out a student, a student or two. Um, a few years ago for our 25th anniversary, we gave uh, $25,000. We don't do quite that much every year, but, um, and we also, they, uh, we have a, there's a representative from the college who is now Michael Harvey, who was mentioned earlier, um, the provost and dean of the college now, and he, he, he works with us on, on any issues that we might have. Um, so um, I really, the only other thing I wanted to say was that I was looking over some of our old, you know, in, information just to kind of, and, and I realized that we used to have a, maybe Sue knows about this, or we used to have a, a, a group that put on plays or something. Really? Um, yeah, so I think we should do that again. And the other thing we had was a wine, we used to do wine tasting. Now that well, wine I think we definitely do. need to. <laughs> I don't think I have. I Dan, think, you need to be the lead in the play, I think. Oh, Maybe yeah. Maybe yeah. write the play. Yeah. Uh -huh. okay. Okay. okay, I'm sorry I mentioned it. Um, I think we should do the wine tasting, though. Don't, I, I, yeah. I'm so okay, bad. David agrees. Okay, that's, I, I, you know, I'm open to questions. I'd love to talk about it, but maybe you want to hear from David first and then see if anybody, you know, wants to have a conversation. Okay, uh, th I want to also thank you, Mariah, for uh, for having us here today. I want to pick up on a comment that you made about uh, how uh, important and attractive lifelong learning is. I imagine some of you were probably around. Uh, what was it now? Two years ago, when we celebrated our twenty fifth anniversary, and to to celebrate that, we put a plaque in the uh, on the uh, entrance to Hodgson Hall. It's a, uh, a quote from uh, George Washington. And I think it's, a, it's appropriate. Uh, the quote is that there is nothing which can better deserve your patronage than the promotion of science and literature. Knowledge is in every country the surest basis of public happiness. I, I think we, uh, we see that, uh, I think, daily in our own lives. It certainly was uh, important for me. I come from an academic background, but one of the things that uh, my wife and I were, were uh, looking for in a place where we wanted to retire was a small college or university where we hoped that there would be something like uh, WC All. And so we moved here in April, I think it was. And in May, I ran into... Uh, Bill Lowe and learned about WC All and uh, have been uh, very excited about participating uh, in its various activities, teaching classes and, and also attending classes. I've attended a lot of classes. But I wanna pick up then on a couple of things that, uh, that Jan said. Uh, first of all, go back to the comment she made about WC All being a unit of, the, uh, of Washington College. Uh, the, the council runs all of its programs uh, without Washington College supervision. I mean, we're, we're uh, a very autonomous entity of Washington College. What, as Jan said, Washington College does provide us with uh, some services, including uh, the office space and classrooms uh, where we, where we hold our classes, but we don't receive any financial support from uh, Washington College. We do pay the administrative assistance salary, supplies, uh, teaching honorariums, uh, learn at lunch honorariums, uh, bus trips. All of these come from uh, membership dues or the special levies for uh, a program like learn at lunch is usually uh, $20, $25 and the bus trips uh, uh, we figure out approximately how much they're going to cost us. And then that's the price that uh, we levy on, on all participants. But um, it's certainly been enjoyable. I, another thing that Mar Mariah said, I think, uh, was the expertise that one finds in this town. It's incredible. 
I mean, I was just flabbergasted, uh, maybe you know, within the first few months of, of coming here with the kinds of expertise one finds. Um, and, you've got, and these people then volunteer to, uh, to teach courses. Uh, one of the individuals I ran into is a, uh, well, now retired lawyer who was in the Justice Department and was uh, a major uh, actor in the investigation into the Pan Am 103 bombing that took place. Uh, gosh, yes, uh, Palestinian. Uh, I'll take Sorry? Yeah. Are you asking who it is? Yes. Isn't it Dan Sakawi? Yes, oh, Dan, Dan Sakawi. whatever. Yeah, exactly. So uh, it was amazing, uh, absolutely amazing that these things happen. But there is a problem with our success. Uh, and that problem is, well, sometimes, but not all the time, but uh, there are many instances where a class that we're offering is, is so popular <laughs> that it's difficult to find a large enough classroom. So that uh, we've, we've had to uh, go outside. We have classes uh, at the Unitarian Universalist Church uh, and the council is constantly looking at the possibility of other venues uh, around town or even in the county going down to, uh, to Rock Hall. Um, uh, let's see, the classrooms are, are a, a difficulty at, at times, but we've been able to find them but it's a nice problem to have because it's a problem that exists because of our success. You look at the classes that we've offered in the past two years, uh, tremendous variety. I, I looked at the, uh, the catalogs from the last two years and categorized uh, these classes. We have assessment of movies, politics, computer science, religion, science, primarily astronomy and uh, cosmology. Um, geography, uh, economics, Spanish. Uh, we taught classes in Spanish, engineering, law, philosophy, theater, auto mechanics, uh, furniture repair. One of my favorite areas, sailing, uh, and also history, uh, music, photography. The, the list goes on. Uh, and you know, some of the examples of the above, uh, one of our most popular courses is the Supreme Court class taught by John Christie. There's an example of our success that we've had to uh, expand it into two sections. Uh, he has graciously uh, agreed to, uh, to provide two sections of that class, a class on how the pyramids were built by an individual who was part of the team that unearthed one of those uh, solar boats that you may or may not be aware of that uh, were buried right alongside the great pyramids. There are actually two of these uh, in existence. And you, if you go to Egypt, they're housed within a, a, uh, a building that, uh, well, prohibits the deterioration of the boats now, but he was part of that process. Uh, we've had, uh, well, classes on opera, Tosca, that involved actually attending an opera in, in Philadelphia, sometimes in Washington. Uh, we've had classes in how uh, infections mutate and spread. Uh, a history of bread is a very popular class. Uh, and another surprising, I think, a surprisingly popular class was on dragonflies. So uh, there's a wide, wide variety. And in art, uh, which I assume is one of your major interests, uh, we've had art, artists of the 19th century, uh, art in series, uh, political cartoons, uh, 21st century art, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the, the way in which, uh, right now anyway, uh, teachers are found is primarily through their volunteering to teach a course. Uh, there are times when we've gone out and, and uh, collared individuals because we thought that they might have something interesting to offer and they have offered a class as well. But usually it's through, uh, through volunteering. Uh, a a uh, syllabus is submitted and the curriculum committee then as a group looks at these and assesses its uh, interest and value and, and uh, will or will not put it on or put it into the curriculum. So that's the way in which uh, we generally uh, determine what classes are gonna be taught. Similar process takes place with the Learn at Lunches. Uh, these are once a month in the fall and spring. 
during the course of the usual uh, typical semester, uh, where we invite an individual to come and give a talk uh, at lunch held in Hudson Hall, typically, until this last year, where now we're, we're holding them via Zoom. Uh, but one uh, uh, has lunch there, and then the, the individual who's been invited uh, gives a talk on a particular topic. This, too, is organized by committee, the uh, special events committee, that also does our trips. So they uh, acquire ideas of individuals who would be good in uh, giving a talk, and then the individual is, uh, is approached to ask if they'd be willing to do so. And we schedule that then during the, uh, the semester. In the past, we've had the museum director of the 9-11 Museum. Uh, we've had the former uh, cur curator, I think is the title, of the White House material that goes into the Library of Congress. Uh, Sherwin Markman on presidential politics, uh, Drew McMullen, uh, uh, who's the director of the Sultana uh, Project, Pam Ortiz and Lisa Deckman on politics. And uh, so, well, my son actually gave one of these uh, a couple, couple days ago. Well, it was back in January, I guess, uh, on the music of the Civil War. Uh, and as Jan says, and I want to reiterate this, uh, you know, on March the 18th, uh, we will have Dr. Astrid Caldos, who's the senior scientist, sorry, uh, who's the senior scientist for the Union of Concerned Scientists talking about climate change. Uh, so she'll be here on March 18th via Zoom. Uh, and then the trips are organized in much the same fashion, uh, usually one uh, each fall and spring, although we may have more than that, but typically it's, it's a single trip. Um, right now, we've got one in the planning stages. If we can get out of this uh, COVID situation, uh, we've got one on the books that we're thinking about going to Richmond, Virginia for a couple days there. Uh, we've gone to Newcastle, to the Walters Museum, to the Wyeth Museum at Brandywine. These are typically uh, just in a single day, a couple hours that we'll spend away from Bestertown. The Holocaust Museum in DC, the African American Museum, Longwood Gardens, uh, Marjorie Mether Merriweather Post House in, in DC, uh, the Harriet Tubman Museum, uh, and Trail. Uh, this was just a year or so ago. And we've also had trips abroad. Uh, one of the most recent was a trip to Cuba, which now closed off, I guess. Uh, but we've gone to uh, Great Britain and looked at cathedrals um, and also to Central Europe. So we, we have, uh, I think, uh, an extremely uh, active and wide ranging uh, variety of uh, possibilities to engage your, your life and your mind uh, with courses, with uh, learn at lunches, and also with, uh, with trips. I see uh, Sue Kenyon's here and she had a great idea that we began investigating, but it's because of COVID, we've sort of dropped that. And that is to have a series of brown bag lunches where we'd have a, an expert talk about something that might be of interest to uh, a smaller number of individuals and have that as, as a regular offering. So I, I think I'll, I'll end it there. Uh, I thank you again, Mariah, for this opportunity and um, open it up to any questions you might have. Well, you are more than welcome and thank you for coming. Um, one thing that I have often um, wondered is whether there's there would be any interest or um, appetite for offering WCL classes in some way to regular Washington College students um, to kind of add that perspective into the room, maybe, you know, obviously college students are really busy and who knows if they would participate, but it's something I've been curious about whether any, anyone's ever had that idea before. Jan, do you want to take this? Well, I was just trying to remember, I know we talked about it <laughs> a lot. Um, a it lot. Seemed, wasn't it kind, I don't know, maybe Sue knows. <laughs> Callaway, are you? 
I, I will just add, I, it's always been open to them. As Jan said earlier, there is no, we don't have an age yeah. thing. We don't have any limitations like that. And it's always open to Washington College staff, faculty, and students. Um, they are listed on the registration form and it is actually offered at no fee for them. Um, so it's always been available. It's just a case of getting them in there. <laughs> Well, I, think, I didn't even know that. <laughs> but I think, David, when we taught a course and when I've taught courses, we've had Washington students attend single classes. I mean, they're interested. I think the word must be out there, but we should be a little more systematic maybe about getting the word out to the students because it's wonderful having them there. They stick out because you've got a <laughs> class of a certain age level and then there's suddenly a 20 year old in the back row. Um, and I usually try to make a point of asking them what interests them, why they've come, how they know about it. I think one of the, the drawbacks is that, well, first of all, students have a, uh, a, a uh, well, a schedule that uh, keeps them very, very active and they get no credit for a Washington a WC all class so that their, their curriculum uh, that they're required to take takes uh, precedence over anything else. So that's probably a little difficulty in, in attracting more student, more uh, younger students. They might be more interested in the learn at lunches. Yes. Because um, they, they can come to, you know, if, a, if the subject of a learn at lunch interests them, they could attend, it's just one shot, um, plus they get lunch, so. I wonder. <laughs> I wonder if, if uh, you know, a drawback there would be the cost, uh, yeah. $20, $25. Uh, doesn't, it's mm -hmm. not mu much to some of us, but it may be much to some of the students. If we might offer a scholarship or two to attend a word at lunch, something we might look into, Jan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I like that idea. I was just picturing a lot of students saying, hey, there's a free lunch over there. <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, maybe that's fine, but I mean, it, we probably wouldn't be inundated with, uh, but I think, I think we could, I like that scholarship idea. I think the way I remember it is that we kind of came to the conclusion after some discussion that they just felt that they just felt they were too busy that, you know, yeah. yes. but, but that doesn't, you know, doesn't preclude further, you know, thinking about it. It is very nice when uh, you have a Washington College professor giving a class and they bring students in to talk about their research or about what they've been studying. Mm -hmm. I, I have always enjoyed that. So. And I think maybe that's the key, Penny, you know, is to yeah. work with the faculty at Washington College to get students in because it's this is, Mariah, you're talking about exactly what we would like to have in, Wash, in WC All, which is a more diverse student body. And we're not talking necessarily about ethnic diversity. We're talking about age diversity as well. Um, it, it's always very refreshing when you get a younger student and it's terrible when you think a younger student is anyone under 75. Um, <laughs> hey. <laughs> Hey, wait a sec. <laughs> okay, David, we all know you're just turned 60. Yes. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah. I have a question. Um, I'm, can you hear me? Yes, yes. yes um, I'm wondering how the COVID uh, situation and your um, sort of using Zoom to a much greater extent might influence your offerings going forward or how you may find that some of the lessons you've learned from the Zoom moment will be used by the um, classrooms and the faculty? I think it's good and bad. Some, some instructors, if this is what you're referring to, some are very comfortable with it um, and some aren't at all. Uh, and I think, um, but then it does open up the possibility of having somebody from, you know, Kathmandu or something, well, you know, come in via Zoom. So and we've talked about that. We haven't really um, taken too much advantage of it yet. But so I think it's, it's both. I think everybody's eager to get back to the part of WC All that is really fun, which is hanging out with your friends <laughs> in class. And then maybe going somewhere to dinner afterwards and um, just having that, that community and that camaraderie that 
really just isn't going to happen with Zoom. But I think Zoom will will be part of it. And um, but it was a little tricky. I think that probably was the case for every group in Chestertown and probably every group in the world at the beginning uh, to try and you know get everybody on board with it. But I think most of the glitches have worked out. Do you think, Sue, do you agree with me? Sue Callaway, well, glitches are I, I was just gonna say that Mariah taught an excellent class on Zoom. She had no problems. She was one of those instructors who really moves very easily in a Zoom platform. I also wanted to say, I mean, my husband took the bread class and um, the instructor who taught the bread class was up in Pittsburgh, I think, or I mean, he certainly wasn't in Chestertown when he was teaching it. And that worked really well. Um, but I also, we've heard of some instructors who are just not comfortable doing it. Yeah. I canceled the class I was going to teach because I, do, I don't need the hassle of worrying about technology. And so I admire someone like Mariah who enjoys it, I think. I think, I think <laughs> one thing that doesn't work, unfortunately, is music. Yeah. Or it doesn't yeah. work as well. No, well, right. I'm not, it's just one dimensional and it just, it just, it's a, it's, it's a shame because, you know, we've had some really fun music events, but right. I think that, that will go back to being in person. It just won't be one of the ones that gets on the, the Zoom um, bandwagon. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, I, I, I was in, oh. Mariah's class was wonderful with recorded music. That was no problem. The Hamilton listening party. Are you referring to live music? Yeah. Yeah. Music then? Yeah. yeah. Live that music is, is tough. And let, I mean, you could have uh, one musician or, or a group in one, all in one place, but you can't, it's hard to play music together from different Zooms. Yeah. Yep. I was thinking, for example, in terms of the judges class, which is now two classes, that uh, perhaps to be able to offer it to a wider audience through Zoom as a, observers even might uh, bring in more uh, money for the for WC all in terms of enrollment and um, be able to expand his widely popular class. Are you talking about John Christie? Or yeah. yeah. If we expand it any further, it'll contain the entire county of Kent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I found, but, that, or I was very hesitant about teaching a class on Zoom because the classes I teach are heavily based on discussion. Yeah. And it doesn't seem like the classes I've taken, it, it's, you don't get the kind of discussion you need uh, I think people are getting better about speaking up in, in Zoom classes, but, but I still would be, be hesitant to do, do, an, do mm -hmm. a class on Zoom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I, it, it's very nice of um, Sue and Penny to say nice things about my class, but you know, I did find it um, draining in some ways that it's not, you know, in, in, you don't get the energy back as much oh, as you yeah. do in person. Mm -hmm. um, but I, you know, I've talked to some Washington college professors who say that they prefer teaching on zoom in some ways. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if, um, you know, in whatever this kind of all shakes out to, to look like, um, maybe there's some, uh, guidance or advice you could get from some of the folks who are really using Zoom to teach all the time about how to make it work. I mean, I think some things are possible that aren't possible in person and so you might have to- I think that's, think a, that. my brother teaches at uh, NC State, North Carolina State, and he had to deal with the whole Zooming thing and over the Christmas break, the holiday break, uh, he said he took some online class in how to, how to improve uh, being a Zoom instructor over Zoom. And he said, it's made a huge difference. He feels very differently about it this semester. He feels engaged and, and so, I don't know, we, but Mariah, before we, before everybody came on, you said something about maybe WC all could, or River Arts or both have a class in just, if it's here to stay, let's maybe 
take it on. <laughs> Try to figure out how to. Yeah, I mean, fun. I don't right. think that technology is going away because there are people who who appreciate it and like it, and it let, it allows people to participate who might not be able to. So, mm -hmm. I, I would think River Arts and WCL could collaborate and do some offer some kind of Zoom Zoom one hundred and one and two hundred and one or something. I don't know. Zoom I know the, the other day when it, for was, the teacher. when it was icy and free. I guess it was Thursday. And I was taking John Christie and John Ames class and boy, everybody was happy that they were <laughs> snuggled up in their own little home. Um, so I think they'll, they'll always be a place for it. We just have to kind of put on our thinking caps and, you know, one of, the, one, one of the problems you, you just allude to is there are no snow days. Yes. <laughs> so my daughter's school has instituted snowstorm days. Is that right? So, yeah. Storm yeah so earlier this week they had a snowstorm day so they didn't have to even do zoom class they just got the day off because of the snowstorm so good, I, I thought that was a good solution but, but you also allude to another thing or and i think for all of you who are talking on this subject and that is as we as we go on um and you know more and more younger people get involved they're going to be much more comfortable with the technology than old uh, people like me. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. I think that will happen. But uh, there's another thing too, and I mentioned this to Jan, uh, gosh, it was it yesterday. Um, we were talking uh, and I mentioned the possibility of having a course on how to teach. As many of the, the uh, people who offer courses are not uh, former academics, uh, you know, they're engineers, uh, lawyers, et cetera, et cetera. And so they may not feel as comfortable in a classroom setting as um, we academics do. And maybe a course on how to teach uh, that would include a, an element of Zoom uh, or using Zoom uh, in the classroom would be something that would be attractive, popular, perhaps. We'll see. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. So believe it or not, we're already almost at the end of our time and we do try to keep somewhat close to our 45 minute time limit so that people don't get oh. Zoom fatigue from, uh, from River Arts. Um, but maybe before we end, I would just love to hear, um, I guess I'm curious what classes people have taken, but also maybe what, what people might want to have offered. Yes. Mariah, mm -hmm. I wondered whether we, since we're meeting in your salon, how, it, uh, what ways could <clears throat> Daxiol and River Arts perhaps collaborate? Would it be possible to do Zoom classes of pottery 101 or whatever? I mean, it's, I can't imagine sitting in my, you know, in my office here doing pottery, but there must be classes that would work very well for our students and for your students and for your space well I, you know i would love to collaborate i, I you know i mean i'm a big <clears throat> proponent of collaborating in general and during this time you know i've i've really believed that we have to collaborate with other you know organizations in our area in order to you know kind of everybody make it through this period and um i think this salon is a is is a great um, initial collaboration between River Arts and WCL, and I would love to talk about some other ideas. Maybe this Zoom class is is something we could talk about. And yeah, we have you know we've been offering classes, and of course our our audiences overlap um, a lot. The WCL crowd and the River Arts crowd, or it's a, the Venn diagram is is quite close together, but. Um, Pottery is tough. We have had a couple yes. of online pottery classes, but it's not easy for the instructor or the students. Um, one of the solutions we found to that is for the instructor to, to, for it really to be an instructional video. And a couple of times it's been a Zoom class that we record and then we offer uh, the, the recording later, mm -hmm. or sometimes it's just been the instructor by themselves doing the, making the video uh, uh, and teaching that way. And then we make it available for 
sometimes for rent or for purchase or else if you buy the kit that goes with the class you get access to the video um, and you know I, I think one possibility for a, a good collaboration you know a lot of our classes almost all of our classes are really you know hands-on uh, mm -hmm. and but we we've talked in the past about mm -hmm. you know an art history lecture or you know classes that are you know less practical and more either theoretical or you know mm. um, have another perspective so that might be a good opportunity for us to work together with WC all and um, and I would absolutely be open to talking about any other ideas good start for a conversation absolutely Jan you and I will have to um, put our heads together. I will have to, we'll have to get together somehow. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> well, anybody else I, have any ideas on other yeah, things they would like to see or real quick? No? Well, let us know if you do. So we, we always end our salons with a toast because um, it's a good sort of little ritual and a way to, to close things out. And we find, here's a little, if people are teaching on Zoom, uh, we've found that having a sort of prescribed closing ritual makes it a lot easier for people to just say goodbye and leave instead of there's a tendency on Zoom for that, like, okay, bye, bye, bye. And, you know, like, like we used to be on the phone when we didn't want to hang up. Uh, so I will, first of all, thank you all for coming to our salon and thank you, um, Jan and David for speaking and and Ronnie for really uh, reaching out and organizing this for us and um, I really appreciate it and it sounds like maybe it'll be the start of a beautiful uh, <laughs> friendship <laughs> Where have I and heard that? My, the toast that I would like to give is to uh, Sue Calloway who is yeah. the person yeah. as an instructor mm -hmm who I would not be able to survive without. The handouts that she uh -huh. has made for me at the last minute and the technical help that she's given and the fact that she is just always there and it has never once given me the impression that the question that I am asking is not a good question, even though it is often not a good question. <laughs> so here's to Sue yeah, and here's to you. thank you all. Here's Sue. <laughs> And I hope that we will see you all again soon. <laughs> thank you. Thanks thank you. so much, Mariah. You're not the only one who couldn't get along without her. Oh, yeah. I know. I know. Fantastic. Thank you all. And, uh, and uh, sign up for the Daily Dose if you already aren't. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. -bye.